Hi everyone! As promised, we will keep delving into the world of financial analysis by illustrating the use of liquidity ratios. To recap, liquidity is all about a firm's ability to meet its current liabilities. Considering their dynamic, short-term nature, you will come across various indicators that measure liquidity in your daily work. Let's revise them quickly. Some of the most commonly used measures are the current, quick and cash ratios. As you can see, they all have current liabilities in the denominator. The numerators are slightly different though, yet they all comprise types of current assets. So, in a way, liquidity multiples help you understand the relationship between a firm's current assets and current liabilities. All right, so if you have a company's balance sheet in front of you, without the use of any other financial statements, you should be able to calculate and interpret these ratios. How do we do that? Let's find out. Okay. To calculate the current ratio, we simply need to divide current assets by current liabilities. Please note that we talk about total current assets and liabilities here. The next step is to interpret the results. Clearly, the higher the current ratio, the more capable a company is to pay its short-term bills. Simple as that. A firm with a current ratio value of more than one has a positive working capital. Can we say that for sure? Yes, we can. Naturally, working capital equals total current assets, CA, minus total current liabilities, CL. Whenever current assets are higher than current liabilities, we will have positive working capital and a current ratio of more than one. The opposite is also true. When current assets are lower than current liabilities, this leads to negative working capital and a current ratio of less than one. On most occasions, this signals that the company does not have enough cash at hand to meet its current obligations. However, it is not always the case, as the current ratio is affected by various types of transactions. Suppose a firm decides to issue long-term debt to raise capital. In the short run, such a strategy will increase cash availability. Consequently, its current ratio will improve. However, in the long term, the organization's current liabilities will increase as the debt becomes due. Therefore, in later years, liabilities will exceed the assets in place and the current ratio will deteriorate. The moral of the story is that we need to interpret liquidity ratios together with the context in which they are calculated. We should never look at the current ratio separately. To decide whether its values are indeed promising, we need to analyze the company's current ratio trends over time. Moreover, we shall also compare it to the industry average of peer group companies. All right, let's calculate SalesSmart's current ratio. It's quite straightforward. In year three, we divide the total current assets of $70,907 million to the total current liabilities of $31,502 million. The result is 2.25. We do the same for year two and see that the current ratio was 1.89 back then. It seems that the company has enough current assets to cover its short-term obligations. What's more, the ratio is increasing, which is a positive indicator. Looking at the individual line items, we notice the upward direction of all current assets, inventory, receivables, cash, and short-term securities have gone up during the years. So. This explains it all. However useful the ratio may be, sometimes it just does not provide an accurate representation of a firm's ability to meet its short-term obligations. Why so? Because it includes all current assets in the balance sheet, and not all of them are liquid enough to provide funds when needed. It goes without saying that inventory is the least liquid type of current assets. Besides, Inventory's net book value often differs from its market value because it does not take into account the quality of the products in stock. In reality, some of the company's items may turn out to be damaged, obsolete, or lost. Overstated inventory and an inflated current ratio may, consequently, lead to inaccurate conclusions about a firm's financial position. We can overcome this limitation by using the so-called quick or asset test ratio which simply excludes inventory. In brief, it considers quick assets only. These are items that can be easily converted to cash. 
To calculate the quick ratio, we divide the sum of cash, short-term marketable investments, and total receivables by the value of total current liabilities. As expected, the higher the quick ratio, the more likely a firm is to pay its short-term bills. What's the quick ratio of SaleSmart? Here is how we compute it. We just do not include inventory in the numerator. The result is 1.15 in the previous year and 1.45 in the currently reported period. The ratio is improving, which means that current assets are growing faster than the SaleSmart's current liabilities. Yet, SaleSmart needs to be cautious about any potential liquidity issues if the ratio gets closer to 1. So far, so good. The third liquidity multiple we can calculate is the cash ratio. Besides inventory, it excludes trade receivables from the total current assets figure. Put differently, it measures the business's ability to satisfy its short-term obligations with cash and marketable securities only. In essence, it shows the ability of a company to meet its current liabilities at very short notice. The cash ratio is relatively more conservative as compared to the other two. By excluding receivables and inventory, it exhibits a firm's cash readiness to manage its operations in times of economic crisis. Is SaleSmart in a good position then? Not really. When we calculate its cash ratio for the two consecutive years, we see that, although increasing, the ratio is well under 1. This means that SaleSmart is not ready to settle its liabilities quickly. It needs to collect some receivables or sell some of its inventory before it could fully pay suppliers. Indeed, if we take a closer look, we will immediately spot inventory and trade receivable, accounting for more than half of the firm's total current assets. This explains the relatively high current ratio and, at the same time, the low cash multiple. Yet, the prospects are good, given that this indicator is increasing over the two consecutive years. Excellent. Before moving on, let's sum up the key points about the ratios we've just introduced. Although all of them measure a firm's ability to meet current liabilities, they should be considered collectively since they represent slightly different things. The major distinction between them is the way they treat a company's current assets. Unlike the current ratio, the quick ratio excludes inventory. Furthermore, the cash ratio factors out trade and other receivables. When estimating these three metrics, we need to consider many factors, such as the historical trend of a given ratio, as well as the industry averages. Good job! Apart from the current, quick, and cash ratios, analysts work with a more comprehensive measure, the so-called defensive interval. It is a widely used indicator that estimates the number of days that a company could continue paying its average daily expenditures with its current liquid assets only. We say liquid because we do not include the inventory balance. What do we observe here? Spot on. The numerator replicates that of the quick ratio, but uses an average daily expenditure in the denominator instead. Right. To make a rough estimate of the average daily expenses, we usually take the sum of all cash operating expenses and the cost of goods sold and divide it by 365 days. Of course, if there are any non-cash expenses, we should exclude them from the calculations. Okay, back to SaleSmart. For the sake of simplicity, we presume that all of its expenses from the income statement are cash in nature. Therefore, average daily expenditures were 443 in the previous year and 483 in the current year. As a result, SaleSmart's defensive interval increased from 84.15 days to 94.28 days. This is yet another evidence of the company's improving liquidity position. The cash and cash equivalents balance is mounting, indeed. To sum it all up, liquidity ratios are most advantageous when they are used in comparative form, both internally and externally. Keep in mind that the cash balance ultimately determines a firm's solvency because it is used to pay long-term debt obligations as well. So, the less liquid an organization is, the greater the risk it will struggle to service its non-current debt. This rounds off the lesson. You all did a great job. Of course, don't forget to go to downloadable resources 
and check out SalesSmart's Financial Ratios Pack in Excel we've prepared for you. Once you get the hang of it, use the blank version to practice what you've learned. Have fun! Thanks for watching.